Hey guys, Duke here. Today we're going to be taking a look at two Chinese panoramic masks that one may have solved the mystery of another. Now, if you recall, a while back on my channel, I did a review of this mask right here. Uh, I knew nothing about it, where it came from, other than China, obviously, what the designation was, etc. It was assumed that this was called the MF-12, or no, not the MF-12, it was something along the lines of that. It was like MF-21 or something. I, I can't remember what I called it at the time, but the way it's looking, um, this might be an actual prototype of this, which is the MF-11D, which uh, a big thank you to Hype for sending this to me. Completely free to review on the channel. I was not expecting this. Um, again, this was out of his kindness and wanting me to kind of clear up the mystery on this thing. Although, take anything I say in this review with a grain of salt, and if you have any further information, feel free to contact me. Uh, this is just what I've been able to gather so far in regards to the mystery surrounding this thing. So... I don't really know what to say about the MF-11D. I don't really have a lot of information about it. It seems to be one of the main contenders for China's newest uh, generation CBRN protective mask. Uh, it, may, it may have some other application. It may just be a commercial item. I'm not entirely sure. But for whatever intents and purposes, this design here seems to be heavily base, or this seems to be heavily influenced off of this design here, uh, and it shares several features which I will point out, and as well as their various differences. So, again, no history to discuss, so let's get right down into it. So starting off with the mystery panel, or the prototype MF-11D, as you can see, it features a recessed panoramic lens, a five-point harness with a elastic mesh skull cap, it features a side voice emitter in the style of the British S10 Klansman style, uh, side voice emitter port. It features a side 40 millimeter inlet, which is mostly gossed, but these can also fit NATO canisters. I'm, I wouldn't classify it. It may just be a NATO thread. I'm not sure. Uh, and then it features a um, FMJ09 style voice emitter slash outlet grill along the front there, which is secured with a very narrow um, clamp, uh, as opposed to this one where it is completely circular, like much like the standardized MF11 or FMJ09. And then on the interior view, you will be able to tell that the mask has a pretty generous peripheral facial seal. It has the standard typical Chinese green rubber voice diaphragm. It has a bracket here, which I presume is for mounting a set of uh, optical inserts, or you just take the side frames off of your glasses and mount them in there. Um, and then below there is the outlet valve, and what is presumed to be a... Um, a microphone port is also hidden behind the nose cup in there. I point this out on my last review, but I'm not going to I'm not going to take out the nose cup and reveal that. On the other hand here, the MF11D very similarly features a recessed panoramic lens which has a bit more defining uh, and a bit more um contours to it. It's 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 contoured to the nose cup and is much more recessed back into the mask and it has a goggle-like lens assembly. Um, the outlet valve is basically the same as the FMJ09, as mentioned before, where it is that sort of oval shape with a standard sort of grill. Uh, once again, it has side 40 millimeter ports. Um, in this case, this one uh, has a black uh, inlet valve disc. And on the other side, it has another 40 millimeter inlet valve port, which uh, on this one, as you can see, I've installed an M45 voice emitter on there just because this one didn't come with a blanking plug. It is exactly the same as the port on this side, I will go ahead and mention, uh, and there has been variants found with drinking tubes on this port, or, you know, the Klansman style side voice emitters, uh, it sort of depends on which model you get, I suppose, uh, and uh, you might be able to tell they did away with the peripheral hood stop that went all the way around the uh, prototype, and on this one they just have a um, ajs list style mask beard hood stop at the chin. Uh, on the front, you can see there's, this mask has a complete absence of markings. Um, you do have a large stamp on the side here, um, and this mask was made by the same plant as this one. Uh, I can't remember the name, it was like Shinxi Shanhua or something like that, I'm probably butchering that greatly. Um, and uh, you may also notice right off the bat that it has a six-point head harness. It is still a mesh skull cap, and I will go out on a limb and say these are probably the most comfortable skull cap harnesses I've ever worn out of any mask in my collection. Um, in addition to being a six point, this, ma this harness also features a donning loop, which the previous mask did not have. Uh, moving on to the buckles, before I move on to the interior, it uses pretty much the same style of uh, buckles, but you can see the actual um, buckle itself. Instead of being this roller tab, it has the sort of Draeger slash Israeli style buckle where it has like this plastic tab and then a metal loop that the uh, elastic passes through. And as you can see, they kind of cheaped out 
on the elastic itself where you can't really see it on camera, but instead of um, sewing it down, they sort of uh, they sort of hot glued it. I think they used like some sort of adhesive to hold this these ends together. Whereas this, as you can see, they just sewed a uh, X pattern onto the material. If I can get the camera to focus on that, um, but you get the idea though. And on the interior, without further ado, the um, one interesting aspect to note before I get into the differences between the nose cups is that they kept the bracket for the optical insert mount. Mine does not have that bracket, but they kept that little uh, that little knob there, or whatever it is, that little um, uh, little piece of material in the plastic where there's a hole through it, and you can mount that bracket on there to install a set of optical inserts. So it's very interesting they kept that in the design, although they probably uh, meant to, obviously, because that was kind of a big feature with this prototype. Um, as you can see, the nose cup is vastly different from the prototype, and you may also notice that it features an actual metallic voice diaphragm, like a standard voice diaphragm, unlike the very frail Chinese rubber diaphragms. And looking down into the outlet valve, it has a, uh, a different outlet valve style, and as, as you can see, it has the exposed microphone port, and that's what I assume it is. Um, I've never actually seen a microphone installed on one of these. Uh, and there's very little info about these in general. Um, and, and in fact, the nose cup is patterned very similarly to the FMJ09. Uh, however, it is slightly different because it has these, these uh, what I like to call deflector wings right here. I don't know if you can see those very well, but those will redirect the airflow up at the lens as it comes in from the side inlet valve down in there. Uh, other than that, there's not much else to see internally. It's pretty basic. Um, it's just is what it is. It's just kind of interesting to see. Uh, this mask is definitely much more comfortable than this one, just due to on fact of the nose cup, uh, which I will, again, I'll invert the harness and compare the two nose cups. And the lens is also slightly thinner on this model. It's like they, um, my only complaint is if they made the lens slightly higher up, this would be better for me, but I find that my vision is kind of impacting the top of the lens, um, just due to how low the actual lens assembly is. So if they made that a little bit higher, it would be perfect, but this is definitely... Uh, designed for Asian facial ergonomics, and so despite it being comfortable on me, um, there are a few features about the design that do not line up with my facial proportions, but anyways, getting a interior view, and you bet you're wondering about the orange bag that's below the two that I'm kind of doing this video on, this is actually the bag that it came in, which means it, it is more or less a production item, um, so keep that into consideration as well. Anyways, inverting the Head harnesses, you can see the differences between the two and the nose cups. Um, this would use a standard MF14 or MF15 style uh, nose cup where it's a silicone. It's very flimsy. It's very cheap. In fact, this one's very, uh, it's kind of warped. Uh, I can't really see it in the video, but uh, it's it's warped along the front. Uh, it's just not a good nose cup. Whereas this one is actually very well designed, very well thought out. Um, very good design. Uh, not much else to say about it other than I like it, and it fits me better, definitely better than this nose cup here. Um, that's pretty much where the differences end, and again, very similar masks to each other as a whole, and you can, that's why I'm definitely leaning towards this being the prototype of this. So hopefully that's kind of the end of this mystery. This is just the prototype for the MF11D. Um, so if you have any more information on these, do not hesitate to inform me. Uh, and of course, as always, leave, leave any comments, questions, corrections, or concerns down in the comment section below. I am Duke, and I will see you all later.